Hello and welcome. My name is John O'Donnell from Vanderbilt Industries. And today we're going to be looking at SPC Connect 2.4 updates and changes that have been made. We're very proud to present 2.4 and it's a huge evolution in the product. Just to recap quickly on where SPC Connect has come from. When the SPC Connect was originally created, it was designed to create a bridge for system users to securely access their SPC panels, allow them to share their systems and securely control and communicate with their devices. With SPC Connect 2.0, we launched a new platform for security companies and installers to better support their customers to offer services, and there has been a huge uptake in this feature set. With SPC Connect 2.4, we are now building on that service. We are bringing together those two elements of the system closer together. And you will see that throughout the feature set that there are many things to do with users, verification, and enhancement for the system users and for the companies and the services they can offer. The SPC Connect 2.4 enhancements are very varied, but they, again, they have this common theme of offering more services to the end user. For the company installer, we've enhanced verification, verification archiving, event disk configuration, challenge message configuration, and enhanced the user configuration in SPC Connect. For the system user, the main benefit is push notification, verification, and user control. Verification has always been a major component of SPC systems and a method used to confirm alarms used by many systems throughout Europe. Just to recap quickly on how it works today, verification zone is added on the SPC panel and an audio device and camera is assigned to that verification zone. This is then configured with an alarm zone so when it triggers, the audio and video information is stored on the SPC panel. Users could then review this on the SPC panel or through some CMSs viewed remotely. However, once the alarm was restored, this information was destroyed. This was a bit of a limitation, and a number of customers over the years have asked us to enhance this. By leveraging on SPC Connect, we can offer a huge new range of services for the verification zones. Verification archiving, which is now released in beta form. Beta form means that this feature may be removed or changed without notification. With the video archiving, we can now say once a verification alarm is triggered that the SPC Connect will automatically store that information on the SPC Connect server. Once this is enabled, you must also select a time period for the validation of your data. So after one month, the data will be destroyed, or after six months, if you wish. Once this is configured, the data will be available afterwards for you to review. In each panel group, you will see all your panels and how the, what data is available for them. For each panel, we can drill down and see the individual alarms. We can view this data, export it, or delete it. What you can see in the bottom right is an overview of a subsection of the verification data. It shows the images and the audio as seen on SPC Connect. You will also see on this screen you can use it live streaming, send a challenge message. And what you cannot see is that the log and event information will also be visible to you. When the data is exported, it can be exported in two formats. A .zip, as you will see above, which contains all the images and the audio, if you wish to email this to a third party, or a .flx. The .flx contains all the information that you see on the screen, including logs, events, audio, and video. The verification data is also available if archiving is not enabled. And for more information on this, please review our verification video as part of SPC Connect 2.0. Next, we move on to Aventus configuration. This is part of verification. As SPC has always been limited by four cameras connected to a device, this has limited certain sites. And what we have achieved with SPC Connect 2.4 is the ability to pour forward an Aventus and then add it to SPC Connect. 
This allows us to use the Aventus video streams as verification zones. In order to configure this, as I said previously, you do have to port forward the Aventus. Entering the IP address port in username, we can verify that the connection exists. Once this is achieved, the channels that are configured on the Aventus will appear. This is similar settings to what we have on the SPC panel in terms of pre, post, and interval between images. We can configure this on SPC Connect. Please note that the event is must be configured to be recording in order for verification to be obtained from the NVR. In the final setup, we configured the verification zones on SPC Connect. Once this is achieved, the SPC Connect will retrieve the verification zones currently configured on the SPC panel and allow you to select if the NVR's camera should be used for a particular verification zone. From here, we can also look at the live verification from the NVR in order to ensure we have the correct camera. The end result of this is that if a verification zone is triggered with an Aventus DVR, the video stream will be pulled from the NVR as if it was a camera on the SPC system. Challenge message configuration. Challenge messages are a useful tool of the SPC system, which are programmed onto SPC keypads and audio devices and can be narrated and triggered remotely in order to communicate with people on site or to challenge possible intruders. What we have added in SPC Connect is the ability to enable challenge message triggering from SPC Connect and the ability to name these. So the programming of challenge messages must still be performed on the SPC panel. However, when handling alarms or events on SPC Connect, you will now be able to issue a challenge message directly from the SPC Connect. User configuration. One of the main enhancements we've made in SPC Connect is the user configuration. The SPC web page has always provided a powerful tool for user configuration, and it's quite quick and easy to set up users on it. What we have done in order to unify the platform more is to replicate this process inside of SPC Connect. And the reason we have done this is that it allows us to leverage more off SPC Connect and to add additional options. So when we look at the SPC Connect edition, of users, we can see there is some very similar fields to the SPC panel. However, there are also some new ones. For example, first name, last name, email address, and custom search fields. These are not part of the standard SPC system, and they have been added in order to support three key new features. The first is that we are now allowing for SPC Connect accounts to be created from the company account. So if a customer requires an SPC Connect or remote access, by obtaining the, their postcode and phone number, these must be matched and be consistent. The user can be given a Connect account directly from here. Once we complete this process, the user will receive an email saying that the account has been created, and they will be prompted to enter their information on completion, the panel is automatically added to their account. The second is a bulk import. This allows for the importation of a large number of users through an Excel-compatible file into SPC Connect. When these users are imported, they are added onto the SPC panel and onto SPC Connect. Users' pins and ease can be emailed to the users through SPC Connect in order to ensure a smooth setup. The third and final one is a very small feature we've added. However, it's been quite highly requested by installation companies that when a user forgets their pin, that there is an option within the edit user to, to email the pin to the user. The installer who performs this action never actually has to know what the user's pin is and the user is requested to change their PIN on completion.
Now to system users. SPC Connect is proud to announce that we are releasing push notification for iOS devices. We are expecting this to release at the start of August. The push notification will operate by an update to 1.5 of the app. The user will be requested if they wish to have push notifications, and if they enable them, they will receive notifications for alarms, confirmed alarms, and restores. At the moment, we are disabling all other event group types. We want to do this to ensure a smooth ramp up of the push operation. Once a push is received, the user can click on the push, it will automatically open the SPC Connect app, and they will be able to immediately view the alarm status. The push also sounds quite a unique sound. In terms of material, we have created quite a lot of information for this SPC Connect 2.4 release. There is pricing information on SPC Connect. There are videos with far more information on all the major components. We have the installer manuals now available in HTTP format. We have the SPC Connect marketing website at the address below live. And for the system users, we have the user configuration manual, which is live on spcconnect.com today, or spcsupportinfo.com. We also have the quick start sheets, which we intend to release in the coming weeks, which will be a speedier way for installers to register users on SPC Connect. I'd like to thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions about SPC Connect 2.4, please let us know.